head and I think you'll see things easier but yours is very smooth actually along the suture line. So this is all frontal bone from here up. So parietal bone I want to be back. You're going to see me do it with two fingers so you can use three. You can use whatever you want as long I, I will always go back to what AT still said. As long as you can understand the anatomy and physiology and what it is you want to change you put your hands however you want. I want to make sure that I'm on parietal bone to release this. So I want to be back. If I'm doing this and I'm on both sides of the coronal suture, I don't expect it to get some change. I wouldn't say that nothing would happen from doing that, by the way. You know, I learned that everything is all black and all white. It's not. It's shades of gray. If you put your hands in the wrong place and you have the right intention, I don't know that something good might not benefit them. But I prefer that you do it right, given the choice to release, as was put, the stuff. So I'm going to take these two fingers and I'm going to make sure I go back and I'm on parietal bone. We're also taught to go like this to make sure that you're not on the squam squamosal part of the temporal bone to make sure that you're high enough. I don't do that with people. Um, the reality is, is that uh, temporalis muscle in inserts the fibers go back up into an apron neurosis up here. So they can go like this and you'll feel it. It'll actually be on parietal bone. So that's not really reasonable for us to do. What's reasonable for us to do is to go pretty far back, okay, more than 40% back, halfway back. The occipital bone is all the way back here. So I can go back here and just be high up. If you're on their ears, if you're near the earlobe, just figure you're on the temporal bone. So be high up. I'm going to have my fingers touch for the same, can you slide down just a little bit? I'm going to have my fingers touch for the same reason I told you before. It's just easier for me to operate with this as one unit where I, this part of my hand is stabilized than both of my hands being free in this case. So I'm going to rest my hands across the suture. If you look at that picture from Gan, he's showing that he's separating the suture this way. Um, I'm not doing that. Can you? Sure you can. I don't think there's a need to. Because when I, when I compress medially, that will buckle a little bit of this um, sagittal suture. This is mimicking uh, internal rotation. External rotation of the parietal bone is going to be this. Remember we said from the beginning, we said that this um, AP diameter was going to go uh, get sucked slightly in and the width was going to go slightly out. The width is going to go out because Harry's going to bring me that skull over there. These are my powers of telekinesis. Watch. <laughs> and it's coming. I uh, can't really do it in this model. It's going to be a horrible mess when I try and do it, but I like that. Uh -oh. There we go. This is ex this is external rotation. Okay, this is external rotation. This is internal rotation. If I if I am going to push things internally, it's going to loosen the suture. I, I want to be careful with my terminology when we say open the suture. It's still going to it's not radiographically going to look different, okay, but there is a river of collagen in there. It's going to be more mobile. So if we want to open or loosen that suture, all I need to do is get some compression in the middle. Once I get that, I want to lift back towards my stomach. So these are two separate techniques. I'm going to do them together. Here's how I'm going to do the first one. Oh, um, you know, my teachers are very specific about putting this hand here. This is all wrong if I'm touching the frontal bone. Me, I don't care. I'll lay my hands everywhere in the head, but these are the only two fingers that are working. But these are the fingers that are working. So you don't have to be antiseptic with your hands. I need to be comfortable. And I'm going to put my fingers here, but they're doing nothing. Now, I'm going to compress. How hard do I compress? How hard would you like me to compress, CK? That's good enough. You don't even know what you need. You don't know. You don't know nothing. Just a patient. He thinks he knows what he needs. He just needs to tell me if it's too uncomfortable. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is, as you might imagine, I was shown to do this as to compress into a stop point and then lift. What I like to do, what I found seems to be easier for me, is to compress and then push more on one side than another side, like I'm playing ping pong. I push to the left, I push to the right, and I actually, I let it go back to where it was. Just like I'm trying to loosen a stuck drawer. Okay, two ways to, to loosen a drawer. You pull it out or you shove it back in and pull it out. I'm just going to play with it a little bit this way. 
and then I'm going to bring both fingers together until a clear fluid starts to come out of his ears. We wouldn't do that to you, CK. Again, this whole thing, it's not a technique. It is a dance you're going to do with him that you're going to lead. My goal is to first get this opening to get some change up where my fingers, up where my thumb is. Not that I'm palpating with my thumb, but if my fingers come close medially a little bit, it has to buckle the suture. Uh, if you're treating children and some difficult deliveries, I'll get children that are coming that have overriding sagittal suture. I have them come into my office looking like this. And this is one time where you can really look like a hero. You do the treatment and they leave the office looking like that. And in truth, a lot of those things would have just corrected themselves had I done nothing as their brain begins to grow. But you are relieving tension around the vertex. Um, it's very changeable with very mild force. So I'm going to compress and I'm going to exaggerate my motions now. Pushing to the left, pushing to the right. I'm going to let it go when I push to the left and right. I'm not just squashing. I want to loosen this like a ping pong ball. Right, left. This has not, I'm not doing this with cranial rhythm. It's mobility. And then I'm going to bring them both together. To an end point. What's the end point? It's always going to be what you decide. I feel like I got something. Now I'm going to lift, which means I'm just going to reach back into the chair and bring him towards my stomach. I find that patients report less with this technique than they do with frontal. Frontal is really not, a frontal bone is really free to move. Temporal bone is really free to move. Frontal bone, people will tell you they're floating. Um, Temporal bone, you know, people, that's when they start making the sounds. That's a good sound from an adult. Okay, we start releasing the temporal bone. We all like it. Most of us do. Children, they all hate it. Why? Because it's very fascially connected inside your skull. And you start pulling their ears while they're having an earache, it's going to be painful. But it will also help the ears to drain. It's a reason to do it. I'm getting a nice lift here, but I'm not, I'm not going to stay here forever because I'm going to very quickly move on to my next technique. How is that, CK? 